The Digital Photography Cafe show is brought to you by Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool for your camera. And by Mosaic, your Lightroom photos automatically on every device and backed up. And by Shootproof, the easy way to proof and sell your photos online. Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe Show. Join hosts Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina as they chat about the art and business of photography. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. This is episode 103. I'm Joseph Christina here with my co-host Trevor Curran. On last week's episode, we talked about the Rocket Travel Slider, backing up your photos to Amazon S3, and discuss camera sensors and how they are more and more like film emulsion. If you haven't watched last week's show, I encourage you to do so. You can find it at our website, digitalphotographycafe.com, in iTunes, listen with the popular Stitcher, TuneIn, and Xbox music apps, or watch in HD on TiVo. Yeah, so Joe, we are back. How you doing, my friend? Doing well, doing well. Another episode? Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Another week has been a hectic week for both of us. It's been um, nuts. We're actually recording like a day later than normal. Um, it's just been it's been really really nuts. yeah. So, a lot of a lot of clients. You guys, stuff going you guys on. will get it on time. Yeah, right? they will get it on yeah, time. They'll still get it. But we are recording a day a day uh, later. It's just been it's been crazy. But that's all right. Yeah, it's all good. Can't complain too much, yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe complaining yeah, about something else. So <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So anyways, let's go ahead and delve right into it. This, this week, we're going to attempt, like we've said in the last couple of weeks, to keep it to that 30 to 40 minutes. We're going to, we're going to, we've been threatening, but uh, we've been going way over. We've been like up to like 40, 50 minutes. It's like been kind of crazy. So, but anyways, we're going to try to shut up and kind of get to the, get to the point here a little bit. Um, so anyways, WWDC, right? In the news. Yeah, WWDC, the um, Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference is coming in June uh, June 10th right. to San Francisco. And uh, that's always interesting because they always have something, you know, new products or product refreshes right. or something going on at that um, at that conference. Um, it's primarily for developers, people who are writing yeah. for, you know, the Mac operating system or who are writing for, you know, the, uh, the iOS operating system. Um, but yeah. they always do seem to have some good hardware announcements. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, the entire thing is for the devs, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, you know, us out here in the general public always get to see kind of like behind the scenes of what is coming. Um, usually it's not something that's going to, you know, hit the market in the next month, but um, the following quarter or the next release uh, um, time, we'll get those new things. And that's when they, you know, introduced the retina and they introduced a lot of, you know, anything that's like hot new kind of thing. Right. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm going to say probably the air, right, will end up retina um, you know, like that high end, uh, uh, retina look. Yeah. And, we're going to uh, see the retina displays and everything. I mean, that's just their, yeah. that's their new thing. We're going to start seeing more SSD drives in their, in, you know, the rest of the laptop yeah. line. I mean, I, I think we're going to see all that, all these types of, you know, minor upgrades, let's say refreshes yeah. on existing yeah. product lines. I, I don't think we're going to see any big new announcements like a new iPhone or, or yeah, no phone, iPad like four. That you know, four months later. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, just, yeah. So, but once again, it's Apple and it's in the news and, you know, whenever you're, whenever you're dealing with Apple, no matter what, even if you're, if you're an Apple fanboy or you're not, you have to take notice because, you know, they're, they're kind of doing it and doing it yeah, right. They're, for quite they're some setting time trends, now, so. you know, they are, I mean, yeah. Apple is really a good sign to watch for the upcoming technology. So, yeah, they're like the, you know, crackberries of the past right where everyone had to have a blackberry yep. uh in their pocket and um you know now of course now it's you know iphone i ios but tell you what android is right there you know it is right there so uh yep. android is, and i'm glad is, they they need that competition for sure yeah they do i mean android really is the probably the number one operating system now i believe yep. in, in the mobile space um just right. because it's available on so many different devices um, I, you know, the iOS is number two just because it's locked down. I mean, it's only available on, you know, iPods, iPhones, iPads. So, right. um, you know, but it's all good. It keeps, uh, everybody who likes Apple, you know, you've got some nice exactly. choices. Anybody keeps the who economy likes going, right? It keeps everything keeps going. Keeps people right. working. So also Google now, 
right? Very cool. Um, iPhone, iPad app, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is new. This Google Now. Um, it it kind of reminds me of maybe like the the Windows eight. Uh, mobile or the Windows mobile operating system where you have tiles. Yeah. And you can actually have right. these different tiles within this app of different information. It could be the weather, it could be stocks, it could be flights, it could be anything like that. And you swipe through these tiles with your finger, um, which right. is really cool. But it also incorporates Google search, um, yeah, that's which big. is pretty nice. Yeah. So, and it, it has voice recognition built into it. So you can hit the microphone button, you can go through and, you know, ask it whatever you want. And, it will ideally return the information. So I downloaded the app. Looks pretty cool. Um, played with it a little bit, just just a little bit when I uh, saw this uh, article come out. But what I, what I think is really interesting with this is not even so much the app, but it's just more and more of these types of apps coming out. You know, making sure. mobile search um, a bigger part of your smartphone experience. Yeah, they're saying, I think it was 25% of all Google searches, right, are coming from smartphones. Yep. So if you think about that, 25% on the billions of searches that probably happen um, per day, right. that really that really tells you that um, your website really needs to be yep. mobile friendly. If it's not, you've just, you're, you're shot. Um, I notice a lot of big, you know, companies, I'll give you a perfect example, um, we'll call one out, Uline. Um, Uline does, you know, packaging material boxes and all this kind of stuff. Um, if you go to their website, it's very nice. Um, there, when you go to their website through the iPhone, it comes up very, um, vanilla, let's say, but very useful, very it's functional. Easy. Yeah. It's just, it's perfect. I mean, at the very top, huge, the size of the, the whole phone, right, right all the way across is their phone number. If you click it, it immediately dials. Them, right. Right. This is the type of stuff, and this is where companies are going. They're one of the companies that I would have to say have the best customer service. I mean, even I would say even better than Apple. I mean, they are absolutely unbelievable. And if anyone wants to take notice of a company on how they run their business and how they keep people happy and how they do things, you look at Uline, and you can definitely use them as a model because they are unbelievable. When you call them, they immediately you know know who you are. They know what you've ordered in the past. They don't have to sit there and fumble you know fumble around and try to figure stuff right, out. Right, They are amazing. And uh, no, they are not a sponsor. But uh, just gotta kind of put that out there. When you see something really good, you gotta kind of kind of yeah kind of talk it. about it. Yeah, yeah. they're very, they are absolutely amazing. But yeah, back to the the phone thing. Absolutely. 25% of all searches through the phone. That means you really need to have your stuff straight when it comes to your website. And if you don't, yeah. you know, you really need to. Yeah. Well, this, you know, we've talked about this a lot in the past about responsive website designs and everything. And, and that's what I do. So I'm a big proponent of it, you know, of course. Right. Um, but, you know, there's uh, Morgan Stanley uh, put out a quote that says 91% of all smartphone users have their phones within arm's reach 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, I mean, that's serious. I mean, 91%. I'm one of those 91%. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. And yeah. what's happening is people are becoming so used to having their mobile phone with them all the time, right by their side, that sometimes it's just easier for them to pick up the phone, go to Google, search something there, rather than getting up and going across the room to the laptop. My dad is a perfect example. I mean, he... He's not a real technology person, but he's getting more into it. And that's what he does. I mean, the laptop is only 10 feet from his chair, but, you know, yeah. he prefers yeah. to just pick up his phone and and use voice recognition, talk into the phone and and have it do a search. So this local search, local search through these mobile devices are be becoming bigger Big. and bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know, the search engines know that you're on a mobile device. It's using right. and they know your they know your geographic area. Yes. They actually know your latitude, longitude, exactly where you are. That's right. So those local searches become very, very important. You know, you're looking for a martini bar someplace and you're driving down the road, you type in martini bar and you come up with you don't come up with a martini bar in California, you right. know. You come up with a martini bar and where you specifically are. Or food or restaurants or even maybe a photographic studio. That, well, right? that's right. Very I mean it's really, really important, really big. That is right. Because again, you know, people are not just searching for storefronts. 
you know, with their mobile devices. They're searching for whatever. They're searching for anything that they would normally look for on the desktop. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a matter of convenience that the phone is more convenient for them to pick it up and do a quick search on. So that right. really is important. Um, having that mobile friendly uh, website is is becoming more and more critical. And if you guys are running those all flash websites without an HTML fallback, um, you really need to start thinking about redoing that. Um, yeah. It's it's you're going to fall way behind the times, and you're yeah. going to become obsolete. Basically, people aren't going to be able to find you. If if they no. you know again, I mean, I've got stats out the wazoo from a brochure that I just put together. But um, basically, if somebody comes to your site and they have a poor mobile experience. Odds are very good that they are going to leave. They're going to go to the next site and they're not going to come back to your site. Yeah. And you have like probably about eight to 10, 12 seconds to um, kind of lure them in, woo them over. Let's right. say kind of kind of get them in. Because if not, they're gone anyways. They're clicking onto the next. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So anyways, um, another thing that was kind of interesting, um, Brad Pitt, and I saw in a magazine that was taking pictures of uh, Angelina, Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Yes. My favorite. Um, I know. You like the Angelina. And it was, the, it was kind of it's kind of interesting. You know, you see, uh, you see some of the pictures that he came up with, and some of them are uh, whatever, but some of them are really good, right? Yeah, he's, you know, the this was on uh, F-Stoppers here, and, uh, you know, they show some of the shots, and uh, he really kind of, took more of this kind of black and white grungy look kind of very you know very grainy looking let's say um and if you're watching the video you'll see them up on screen here um they you know they're they're okay i mean they're okay they're they're not all what i would like um you know but they're good yeah it's and what's what i like too is when you see him in the picture that the you know on the cover he's holding one of my favorite film cameras of all times and that's the like yeah yeah um and uh um it, it's just uh it, it just brings back memories and and yes you know the the pictures are okay but you know what this goes back into last week when we we're saying you know pixel peeping and you know really going down and looking you know which you know how how good are the pixels how the you know some of the images that i like out of the few that were in this article are images that you would look at and say, ah, oh, you know, technically eh, not that great, or you know, it's a little bit grainy, a little this, that, or whatever. But I like the mood. I right. like the feel. I like the geogra the geometric shapes that the shadow and light create in the image. I like the movement in the image. I just like the way it's put together. Now, does that mean that he did it on purpose or, you know, just like, just like we say, even a squirrel can get a nutty once in a while, but, um, he definitely got a nut with some of these pictures yeah. and, um, you know, be obviously being that it is Angelina Jolie, uh, it's hard to take a bad well, picture. Well, having a really gorgeous, good looking but. subject um, definitely helps. It definitely yeah. helps. Um, you know, it the you know having having an attractive subject definitely will take the viewer's eye off of let's say the more critical things that we would look at, like composition, uh, framing, sure. color, for that matter, and puts the focus on the subject itself because it's the you know, they're still so stunning. They stand out. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. Like a lot of these pictures, um, if it were just an average person, probably would not feel as good to me, let's say. Right, um, right. But because they are who she, they are, you know, she's got definitely defined facial features. Obviously, you know, she's got those uh, extra large lips that definitely draw your focus in. Um, you know, and her hair, she's got the long, dark hair and stuff. So, I mean, it really... You know, it works well in these photographs. Yeah. And bear in mind, these pictures are back from like 2008, I think it is. They're, they're a while ago, but they're kind of, they just came back up, resurfaced, so to speak. And, um, but it just, you know, it's an, it's, it's kind of just an interesting um, view of, you know, photographs from, let's say, a non-professional and how they're put together and how, you know, we look at them. Yeah. And, you know, what do, are they, you know, is there substance behind it or is it just, you know, a quick snapshot? And I tell you what, there's a lot of quick snapshots out there to, to get something that actually has a nice feel yeah. or a mood or that's actually describing something or putting, you know, putting forth some type of feeling. 
is not an easy thing to do. Sure. And, you know, the pixels that are involved are, are important, but not as important as that mood or feeling. That's kind of more what we're right. kind of That's looking right. at or saying. That's right. So, but anyways, you can look at some of um, Angelina's photographs. Uh, yeah, we'll have a link in the show notes. Hit. Yeah, on there. But uh, I tell you what, before we go any further, we got a bunch of other stuff yep. on the other side. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick break and hear from our sponsors. Are you frustrated with slightly out of focus images when you know your autofocus spot was dead on? It's simply not your fault. From manufacturer to manufacturer and even lens copy to lens copy, there are slight variances to the exact spot where light is being focused onto the sensor. Finally, there's a product that allows you to compensate for those variances and make sharper images immediately. Focus Pyramid, the autofocus lens calibration tool, is an absolute must for every photographer. If you want to make the sharpest images possible, then you need to take control over your camera's focusing system. With the Focus Pyramid, you can calibrate all of your lenses on your lunch break. The Focus Pyramid makes lens calibration quick and easy at an affordable price. So give your lenses a new lease on life and take your photography to the next level. Head over to focuspyramid.com forward slash DPC and get an additional 10% off just for being a show listener. From phones, tablets, laptops, and PCs, these days photographers use multiple internet connected devices. Have you ever wished you could view your Lightroom images, folders, collections, and metadata from any of these devices? Now you can. Mosaic Storage Systems has created Mosaic View, an application that gives you access to your images without exporting or using a publishing service. Mosaic also offers Mosaic Archive, which directly integrates with Lightroom as a powerful cloud backup solution. Mosaic gives photographers access to all of their images from anywhere on virtually any device. Try Mosaic View today for free and access 2,000 of your most recent images. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Mosaic is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans. Go to mosaicarchive.com and use coupon code DPCAFE at checkout. Mosaic. Lightroom. Anywhere. Any device. Secure. Backed up. As photographers, we're always trying to increase sales and profits after every event. We shoot an event and have hundreds or even thousands of images that just sit on our hard drive. Perhaps a better workflow would increase sales by getting those valuable images in front of the client. That's where Shootproof comes in. At Shootproof.com, you can have an online gallery for all of your clients' proofing needs. Shootproof helps increase profits while building your brand and securing your photos without charging commission fees on sales. Shootproof galleries display your photos beautifully while helping to streamline your workflow and automate more of your business through their intuitive studio control panel. Once approved, photos can be directly fulfilled through Shootproof's various professional lab partners or fulfilled by you. All Shootproof plans have the same feature set. You simply choose the number of client photos stored, decide what products to sell, and the price. Try Shootproof today by taking advantage of their free 30-day trial offer. As a Digital Photography Cafe viewer, Shootproof is offering a 20% discount off any of their premium plans by using promo code DPC20 at checkout. Shoot proof. Upload, share, sell, print. All right, so Joe, we are back. And we had a listener question this week from uh, Sean Pennington. And that came in on our Facebook page. And this is in reference to the discussion we had on episode 101 about the uh, Air Display iPad app as using your right. iPad as a separate as a second monitor. So. His question was, uh, did you try using the iPad as a second screen with Photoshop? I have been wondering how feasible it is to have my toolbars on the iPad so I can fill the monitor with my image. Keep up the good work, guys. And so, uh, excellent. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, thank you. Right? Thanks for um, sending a it's question. It's a good in. question. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people looking for the answer to that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yes, um, I did try it and it does work quite well. Um, as I had mentioned on episode 101, I am using the iPad first generation. So as far as processing right. power goes, it's a little bit behind the times. I mean, obviously there's there's two newer versions out there. Um, but as far as using it as an extended desktop and putting your Photoshop palettes on it and using your main screen on your laptop as the, you know, for the image, for the workspace, right. um, it worked great. 
you know, you could take your, your mouse and go right across, right off the screen, right onto the iPad, you know, work on your palettes, get what you need, you know, come back, do your thing. Um, it really worked uh, quite nice. Um, yeah. One thing I would say, though, is definitely make sure you turn off the touch-enabled interface because, honestly, it just really doesn't work that well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, when it's turned on. Because it doesn't work. Yeah, it really doesn't. I mean, if you were on a website, let's say, and you had the website on the on the iPad, it would work fine because you're pushing, you're hitting a hyperlink, and that right. button is is acting. But when you're talking about palettes, you know, you need to bring your mouse onto it you need to click down, you need to select, you need to type in a yeah, number Yeah, it's just or not designed for it's that. It's not really designed for that. Basically what happens is your finger becomes the, the mouse and when you touch the it, stylus, right. it, it, yeah. it moves the cursor around, but then you need to start tapping and all kinds of stuff and it just doesn't really yeah. work well. So I would say turn that off, don't even worry about it. That way you're not accidentally hitting the screen and causing something to happen. Um, but as a second monitor, it definitely works great. Yeah, and you know, I'm definitely a proponent of having multiple monitors. Um, oh, yeah. I actually use three at any given time. Yep. And um, yes, getting those palettes, especially when you're in Photoshop or if you're doing Illustrator, like for example, for you, yep. or even if you're you know, in uh, Lightroom on a regular basis, it's good to be able to have an entire screen of an image that you're working on. Very, very important. What I do here in the studio is I do a lot of portrait um, so what I have is I have two different monitors. One's an LG and one is the, um, of course the Apple, mm -hmm. yep. um, the Apple stays obviously just straight across in landscape, but the LG is a swivel and it's a big 24 That's inch. Cool. So that thing gets swiveled so that it's in portrait mode. So I can take an image from one, you know, that I'm working on really close up, let's say, um, and I want to see what it actually looks like in portrait mode. So it's not in landscape. I drag it onto the other um, screen and now it's the size of the entire screen in portrait so that you can actually see what it's going to look nice. like. That is, it. it's amazing. It really works out great yeah, because cool. now all of a sudden, yeah, you have a portrait now that instead of it being only, let's say 12 inches tall, when you, you know, it's 24 inches tall. Yeah. So it's huge. So it, you could really see what you're doing. Yeah, it, that's It nice. works out well. Actually, you know, now that you mentioned going vertical, you can do that with the iPad as well. Um, you don't have to leave the iPad in, in landscape mode. You can put it in portrait mode. And right. now what it will do is turn your, so if you're running in extended desktop mode instead of mirroring, um, what yeah. it will do is it'll give you that tall, thinner, um, workspace, which is nice if you have uh, palettes that are extended down far. Um, exactly. So yeah, that way it doesn't get cut off at the bottom of the screen. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, we talk about it more in episode uh, 101. So if you didn't hear yeah. that one, uh, head back, you can listen to uh, the initial review about it. But uh, definitely a big thumbs up for me for $10. Um, definitely was yeah, going to say 10 bucks. Very cool. Yes. Very cool. So, you know, um, one of the things that I found uh, rummaging around this week was um, some stats, some, uh, you know, they did like rankings of DSLRs. And this is stats as of May uh, 2013 to see, who, you know, what are the top 10 cameras that are being purchased, you know, the top 10 sales. Right. And these were and, aggregated from Amazon's um, bestseller right, list, I guess. Right. Purchase. Okay. Right. Purchases. So. You know, and normally I I don't like talking about, you know, what are the top cameras or this, that, or the other sure. thing, but I do find something interesting here and it's which cameras and, um, and it's something that we can kind of talk about, but I tell you what, the top one through, what is it? First, second, third, and fourth are all Canon Rebels, yeah. which was very, very interesting to say the least. Very interesting. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the T3i is number one. The T4i is number two. T3 is number three. And the T4i is number four. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously, when we're talking Amazon, we're talking the general consumer. So we're not talking pro-level yeah. DSLRs here necessarily. Um, but what that is showing is the popularity of the brand. And exactly. this all goes back to our conversation last week, the week before, about um, when you start buying lenses. You know, right. if you are a beginning photographer, um, I would recommend a Rebel. I mean, one of these new Rebels, I mean, they have really great quality. Um, you can certainly create some beautiful imagery with it. Um, again, it's a tool. Um, it does have the features yeah. you need. But if you're so, going to start buying glass for Canons, 
um, you know, with exactly. one of these entry levels, you know, then you can get your EF glass, which will work on your full frame bodies down the road if you decide you want to right. upgrade. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I'm a, you know, full frame shooter, everything, you know, I don't like buying digital glass because, you know, it, who knows how long it's gonna be around, whereas EF glass will be around forever pretty much. But anyways, the, you know, we should we should note the, the rest. So the top four were uh, Rebels. Then after that, you have a Nikon 3100, then you have the Nikon um, 7100, yep. then you have a Canon 60D, then a Rebel T3, that's the old, old, old one. Yep. And then um, you have the Nikon 5100 and then the Nikon 3200. What's interesting here is um, uh, there's a couple of things. Number one, obviously Rebel, very, very good. Top 10, you get five, five positions of the, uh, the top 10 are Canon Rebel, obviously. They're doing well in marketing and sales, yeah. and obviously it's a pretty decent camera because um, you know people obviously are saying so, yeah. so that there's more purchasing. Yeah. But what I find interesting here too is that I don't see a Canon 5D, a Canon 5D Mark II, no. a Canon 5D Mark III. I don't see the Canon uh, 7D, um, but I do see um, the D7100. Now, right. you know, I was saying, someone asked about that camera a couple of weeks back and I was saying how I love the, the 7000. So I'm sure I will love the 7100 come, coming right. in. Right. Now, that to me means a lot because that now is not, you know, like a Rebel, which is, you know, 700 bucks. That's like, you know, a $1,400 investment or more. Right. Um, right. So being that that is the only camera in the lot that is of that you know upper i would say middle ground so it'd be prosumer range right. and that it's a nikon uh, to me that means a lot um, yeah nikon's so, really great gaining ground with their middle yeah. of the line cameras and and i think yes. it's great i mean the 60d the canon 60d is on here but i don't think anybody has been really thrilled with the 60d um, I think it kind no. of fell short in a lot of ways. So I think a lot of yeah. people are just bypass. Well, obviously people are buying it. I mean, it's number seven on the list here, but for, for me, that that's a camera body that I would just kind of bypass. But yeah, yeah. the Nikon 7100 is a really nice body. It's a really nice yep. camera. And the fact that it's number um, six on the list here yeah, really thing. shows the, uh, the popularity of what this, what this camera is doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And that, you know, so being that the 7100 would be the equivalent to, uh, you know, getting close to, let's say, like on the Canon on the 7D and that not even being in the running, yeah. that definitely to me means a lot. I, I do like that camera. And I'm back to like what we said a week or so ago. If you're looking into a Nikon and you want to get that middle of the road, you want to get a prosumer camera, mm -hmm. I would even be even being a, you know, a Canon Pro forever. Right. I would recommend the D uh, seventy one hundred. Yeah, I would too. Uh, getting getting into uh, getting into the market, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely, I would too. So, anyways, there's another uh, little thing that um, we kind of want to throw at you guys that is kind of cool. You know, we get you know, all right. So, listening to the show, we have anywhere from pros to people that are kind of like up and coming pros to just the amateurs that want to learn more about photography or or the business side or the art side, either which sure. way. Um, and you know, we always kind of like to give you little things that can help you out in your business or editing or whatever that is affordable, let's say. Right. And you know, you and, and I both, you know, run photo suite, you know, our God, we, we, we're Adobe. You know, yeah. People. We're in the you Adobe do illustrator camp, sure. forever. We're in yeah. the Adobe family forever now. Um, but you know, there's, there's a package out there that just became, let's say updated that you guys should take a look at. I would say it's the equivalent to something like GIMP. Um, if you don't know what that is, if anyone plays with Linux, GIMP has been on Linux forever. It's a Photoshop alternative. Um, but it's also on Mac and PC, yep. but so this, this package is called Acorn and the fourth edition Acorn four is out, um, as of, I guess uh, now. A week ago or something yep. like that yeah and it's basically a photoshop alternative um and it's something to kind of take a look at if you know if the funding is not there to go spend you know fifteen hundred dollars on an adobe suite or something yeah um it's definitely an interesting package right? yeah it's it's uh um a company called flying meat <laughs> love the name uh produces it and this is for mac osx 
and you need 10.8 or higher. So if you're running an old right. Mac OS, it's it's not the new version is not going to be compatible. Um, but the interesting thing is it's only twenty nine ninety nine. It's on sale until the end of May, so it's a little bit higher um, off sale season. So you'd have to check out their site, get the latest pricing. Right. But it is a nice Photoshop alternative. I would say, you know, reading the descriptions and stuff, it feels like it's more along the lines of Photoshop Express um, or GIMP, like you said. Um, you know, it does not have all the bells and whistles of Photoshop, but you know, we've even said in the past shows that for the most part, for what the average person will do, for what the average photographer needs to do in Photoshop, Photoshop 7 probably had all the features you need. I mean, and now we're up yes. to CS6, right? So, yeah. I mean, that was many, many moons ago. But this this version, this Acorn version, um, really has a lot of higher-end features um, right. that you would really only normally find in Photoshop. So, you know, in like the full version. Yeah. Well, and what you know what I like about it is that, you know, it it reads in and writes out PSDs. Yep, which so, is cool. you know that you'll you know, you'll be able to bring in your old Photoshop files. Obviously, if you've done something in Photoshop that it does not support. Right. Um, right. it's going to leave out whatever those specific It'll just filters discard that, or whatever. Yeah. I would imagine, but it does have, you know, retina display. So the canvas is retina ready. Yep. So you can run um, this package on your Apple in retina on a retina display, which is really cool. It does alpha channels, text, you know, all the regular, the normal stuff. It does all the masking, which is important. Yep. It does alpha channels. Alpha channels are, I use on a regular basis. Alpha channels are very, very um, important. Of course, all the layering, you know, like, like you said, with Photoshop seven. Yeah. Four, yep. You've got you all know, your, the, all your layers. Yep all your curves and you know all this kind of stuff so it it's all non-destructive the same thing as just the way photoshop um, works so it's definitely i mean for you know 30 bucks i mean you know it's definitely something to take a look at it's a uh, um i would say yes it's probably more on the lines of a photoshop elements but you know for probably a third of the cost it's something that you can kind of give it a shot try yep. it out and you know what it might be enough now Remember, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I was saying how, you know, ideally, now that we have the new Lightroom that's going to be coming out, um, yeah, obviously we're in beta, but uh, um, we are able to, as photographers, stay in Lightroom, for example, for almost the entire duration of the import, um, yeah, the final let's export. say correction, yeah. right, correction, and then export and almost never have to go into Photoshop for general use. Right. And as these tools in Lightroom become more and more, um, let's say, uh, uh, good, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They but, become uh, better. <laughs> as, they, as they get better and they get stronger and they get more like Photoshop or Photoshop-like and you end up being able to do some of the smaller stuff, like, you know, it would be nice to be able to do some skin editing besides just doing like little dots here, there, and elsewhere in Lightroom and actually be able to, you know, um, do some of this stuff so and masks and stuff like that once that happens we might not have to leave lightroom if that is the case um a little small photo you know editing software like this acorn 4 might be all yeah. that we need along you know in conjunction with lightroom so yeah. we might not need the big package anymore yeah right? i agree i mean unless you're doing heavy photo composition where you're working with lots of layers and text and vector shapes and smart objects and all that type of stuff, um, there may not be a need for this. I mean, if you're doing, right. if you're, you know, the average photographer who's doing, you know, portraits and such, and you're not going crazy, you're not doing design work, let's say, you're not doing um, a lot of high-end commercial work where you need to do all the retouching and, and photo compositions yourself. Uh, most of the time, the art directors or, you know, the, the design uh, staff take care of, takes care of that anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, a program like this could definitely be a great alternative. Yeah. So, and it does do vector, which is yeah. nice you uh, can, that I'm sure you're yeah, happy you can about work with vector shapes. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's good. You can do all your custom, you know, brushes and, you know, you can do the automation, which for me is very important because in Photoshop, um, I've written so many actions to do, right just mundane tasks that you, you know, we do the exact same thing yep, over, over and over and over, and over, and over. Yep. 
um, you know, we write an action. Well, you know, it, this program is also scriptable, so you can write actions also. That's big for me. Oh, that's great. Um, so anyways, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's looks pretty good. So if any of you guys take a look or have used the Acorn package, now Acorn 4, you know, please write us in, you know, um, or call in and, um, you know, leave us some voicemail and tell us about it. You know, we'll kind of get you on the show. Is it'll be? Uh, I'm interested in this type of stuff because there's a lot of people out there that can't afford, yeah, um, Photoshop, and um, they need something. And you know, hopefully, if this if this works out as good as it as the specs say it is, um, this could be that alternative that you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people in our audience are kind of the weekend warriors. You know, they have the day job, right. they're working a side photography business where they'll do work on the weekends and and such. And honestly, if the photography business is not pulling its own weight, let's say financially, sometimes it's really hard to justify going out and spending money on equipment and software. So right. this really is a good alternative. It, it helps to you know keep the budget in check. And honestly, if it's going to do what you need it to do, why not spend the 30 bucks? And if you have some extra money, invest it in quality glass or, or camera, you know, equipment, uh, you know, pocket wizards yeah, or absolutely. something like that, you know, a, a strobe yeah. or whatever, you know, I mean, invested in, in other tools that you can use to, um, make better images. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Editing, edit, editing is important, but getting it right in the camera yeah. is, uh, most important for sure. I think so. Glass is always, you know, anyone that, you know, many times you get people ask, you know, you know what I have, you know, I have this money burning a hole in my pocket, you know, and I want to do something with my, you know, I want some camera equipment. What should I get? The very first thing that anyone that, that I would say is always glass. Buy a new lens um, that is in that that's different than what you have. Um, you know, buy something that's wide angle, buy, buy a telephoto, buy something that you don't already have, buy a straight, you know, piece of glass, buy a, or that you know, cheap a little 50, 50 millimeter that we buy use. a cheap 50 something. I and um, what it does is it, it will spark your creativity because now all of a sudden you're looking out, let's say someone else's eyes instead of always in the same two or three lenses and you see everything similar all the time. That's right. So um, that's definitely uh, something that you can do to kind of get your creativity going. So anyways, before we go and ramble on and on, I think we need to get out of here. Yeah, it's time. I think we're doing good this week, man. I think we <laughs> think we're going to keep it a little shorter. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so if people want to uh, connect with you outside of uh, the DPC space here, um, what's the best way for yeah. them to reach you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, and that's at Joseph Christina, and that's Christina without an H. Great, and you can connect with me on Twitter. It's at Trevor Current. All right, guys, we are out of here. You can get show notes from this episode by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash 103. And don't forget, if you enjoy the show, please give us a five-star review in iTunes. Help spread the word through Twitter. And now you can give us a call through our new comment line by visiting digitalphotographycafe.com forward slash love. So keep the questions and comments coming and we will see you next week. You've been watching the Digital Photography Cafe show with Trevor Curran and Joseph Christina. Be sure to subscribe to the show for free in iTunes or through RSS. You can also listen on Stitcher and TuneIn Radio and watch in HD on TiVo. Visit digitalphotographycafe.com for show notes and to connect with your hosts.